the Oregon offensive playbook is probably the most high level playbook in college football 25. And in today's video, we're going to be breaking down kind of a little mini ebook for you guys. If you guys want to get my full ebook on this offense, everything that you need to know about it, it is going to be in our school community, school.com slash Cody Ballard. The link to sign up for that is going to be in the description below. If you want to take your college football or Madden game to the next level, cool part about the school community is you get access to all of the content for both games. So again, if you want to sign up, the link's in the description below. For free form settings or passing settings right now, passing type is going to be placement and accuracy. Pass lead increase is going to be on none. This is going to significantly reduce the amount of overthrows that you have. Radical speed is kind of up to you. Right now I'm on 15 out of 20. You could go seven out of 20. You could even go three out of 20. Those are kind of the three that I would probably mess around with the most. And let's go ahead and get into the depth chart. So the depth chart for the Texas Longhorns, I do think Texas is the best team. We're just gonna show you how to set this up super quick for the offense. At quarterback position, Quinn Ewers is pretty much the clear cut starter. CJ Baxter's, Baxter is the is really good running back. He's got that 360 spin move. Wide receiver, we're going to have Isaiah Bond at our number one receiver. We're going to have Ryan Wingo at our number two receiver. And we're going to have Bolden as our slot receiver. The tight end position, we're going to have this guy in the black. He's probably the best tight end of the best teams. So super good here. Left tackle, we're going to have Ke Kelvin Banks. Uh, left guard, we're going to have Hayden Connor. Center, we're going to have Jake Majors. Right guard, we're going to have DJ Campbell. And then this right tackle, you see how he doesn't get any ability. He's not really that good as an overall player. What we're going to do, let me see if I can find this guy down here. Uh, this guy, Baker, Brandon Baker, he's probably one of the best tackles in the game that nobody knows about. He has the quick drop ability. It's going to help a lot with picking up pressures. And then, as I said, our slot receiver in this offense is going to be Silas Bolden. Just because he's the best all-around receiver, he gets open on cuts and stuff, and that's what you need for this offense. Now, the audibles for this scheme, we are going to be, like I said, in the Oregon playbook, and our main formation is going to be the bunch strong offset. So the audibles that we're going to want to set in our in our um, little, little playbook here is we're going to want to have this play dagger as kind of our... Actually, I'm sorry. We're going to put Flood here. And the reason why we're going to do that is because we're going to come out and dagger pretty much every single play because it's the best quick hike play in the formation. Inside zone. Instead of inside zone, this duo is really good. Um, this RPO duo is also a really good run. There's a lot of good runs in this playbook. But I think the most versatile one is still the RPO alert screen. So we're going to put that RPO alert screen here. And then in the play action spot, we're going to put this play, if I can find it, it's the... Red zone PA corner, you said has that C route. This is play action blocking is just really good for picking up a lot of the meta blitzes, which is why we're going to be using that. And then for this scheme, we're going to be coming out in the play dagger uh, every single time. Now, when you're running this offense, one of the big things that I want to recommend, I'm going to take the quick jumps out um, on practice mode. They're absolutely roided. So we're just going to take the quick jumps out to try to give you a little better sample size of what you're going to see. When we're running this scheme, you want to have the ball to the wide side of the field. So you want the ball, you, or I'm sorry, you want to have the bunch to the wide side of the field as, as much as possible. So if the ball is on this hash mark right here, we're going to have our bunch to the right. If the ball was over here, now if you look, the bunch is really compressed and tight. There's not a lot of space. So what we want to do is flip the play so that our receiving threats have as much space as possible to be able to work. So again, in general rule of thumb is... When you're running this offense, you want your bunch to the wide side of the field. Now, we're going to start out with just the simplest play in the formation. I think the best, it's a quick hike play out of dagger. All you're going to do is cross your slot receiver. And what you're going to do is you're just going to have a high-low read. You're just going to have a high-low read between the crosser and the drag. Uh, you're going to always, basically with the progression reads here, we're going to look to the fade first. What's really cool about that fade is Isaiah Bond has an ability called takeoff. If they are pressing you in zone coverage, a lot of times he will just basically see how he kind of lit up there. He'll just basically outrun the coverage. And this is a one play score against cover four against cover three. And then if they do run cover two, which a lot of people will do, they're running that kind of cover two on that left side. What you're able to do with this as well is you can kind of throw this into that soft spot against the coverage and then we know how the broken tackles are in this game and it just really makes it a super uh it's super difficult to defend and they basically the way to defend this is they're going to be they're not going to be able to press you on the left side that's pretty much what they have to do so they can't really press you on the left side and then you're able to have your simple high low read here so 
The drag route normally gets underneath pretty much every yellow zone in the game. It's why it's super effective. So as you see there, we're just able to take our drag route. And then if they do decide, you know, that we're gonna just kind of really get aggressive and we're gonna use her the crosser and we're gonna go to the drag, then I want you to look at this tight end late. He's kind of your check down read. So essentially you're peaking the fade, you're looking to the crosser to the drag and then the backside end route. Really, really good route combo. Probably one of my favorite ones in the formation for attacking man um, because number one, this fade route on the left side, if he gets over the top of a press man situation, obviously you wanna look at that first. But then the other thing that you have here within a cover one or just basically any kind of coverage here, whether they're playing cover two or cover one, what you're going to see is this crosser. The crossing, uh, the, just the, the straight up hot route master crosser is probably one of the better man beating routes in the game. It just gets really good separation against man consistently compared to, for example, a post route or anything of that nature. And then you do have your drag route. This drag route oftentimes kind of gets into a, a natural pick and rub situation, and you can just throw it and take some easy yards against that coverage. The next play we're going to be covering is corner strike. And one of the best ways to set this play up is very simple. All you're going to do is streak your slot receiver, and you're going to snap the ball super quick. You have a high-low read on both sides of the field, and this corner route is super good. It's one of the better routes in the game. The cool part about this corner route is it's also – Again, one of the more consistent man-beating routes. So if they're playing man coverage on you, you will consistently see that this corner route will get separation against man. It's because it has a sharper cut to it than the hot route master uh, corner route does have. So you're able to just you know, go to this play. You can hike it super quickly, and you're able to just go. Now, if that corner route gets pressed, you'll see he does eventually get open. I did get screamed at there or shedded because practice mode is – probably the worst thing i've ever seen in terms of sheds and of course i accidentally called the wrong play here so i'll show you this dagger in route see how that dagger in route does beat man late in the play it's what makes this a very very good offense is you have a lot of man beating consistent man beating routes that you don't really have from your hot route tree this season from what i'm seeing so far so anyway it's a corner strike just streak this guy you got that high low read on the right side and then you see that corner out even though right there didn't even like look like it was going to get open just it's like almost like a trust throw that corner route is super good against man the other thing that you have on this play corner strike is you have a high low read to the left side of the field so a couple things you could do with this you could leave this c route on the left side if you want to and i'll talk about why this is effective but really the route that i want to showcase is the running back route if they're playing you in man coverage that running back route is super effective to be able to get over there another thing that you're going to see a lot is cover two uh, with this defense cover two probably defends corner strike the best in sense of the corner route. And so what you wanna do is really take this running back route underneath. This running back route is normally very much so an open read. Now, the other thing that you're able to do against cover two is if they are using this mid read zone and there's not a mid read on the field basically, which is very common when people run cover two, what you wanna look for is this streak because you have these corner routes. Look at this, look at the pass rush on this game, dude. Um, he's wide open, but I can't throw it because my 50 speed defensive end without quick jump just walked in because practice mode is practice mode. Uh, but anyways, let me show you this again. So what happens on cover two is you have this corner route on the right and then you have a C route on the left. So that's going to pull the deep halves out. And so sometimes what you can do is basically just throw this against the cover two coverage right up the middle of the field. And so one of the best things they can do to defend you is play cover two but then they're giving up touchdowns because of the slot streak. So this is one of the reasons why corner strike is such a good play. The play flood is, is super effective. There's a couple reasons to run this play. I'm going to show you the first one here. So the first reason is we're going to use a double corner combo where we're going to put our slot receiver on a corner, stem him all the way down. Our tight end corner is going to stem to about 15, 20 yards down the field. And what you're going to see is the main read on this play is we're looking for the R1 corner route. That's the route that is going to beat the most amount of coverages. So if they are running cover two, the cool part about this play flood is if they are running cover two to that left side here, let me kind of show you what will happen. So a lot of times what's going to happen is that the stem corner will just basically clear the cloud early. And then there's just a lot of space. It's super hard to switch to because he's that much more open 
than if they were in a cover three coverage, right? But if they're in a cover three coverage or cover four even for that matter, and they try to switch stick to the corner, your tight end uh, is going to be open over the top of this play. So your tight end is really good for for this play. He's going to pull all the zones to him. And then this short corner is super good. So you see here kind of that – see how that outside corner, it's super hard to switch stick onto that. And if they are able to switch stick onto that, the best thing that I would be able to show you is a cover two with a with an inside quarter basically. But if they are able to switch stick onto that corner and actually truly be able to take it away, which honestly is really a very advanced thing to do, I would really look for this tight end. So you'll see here they're going to switch stick, right? They take him away, but now look at this corner route. See how that corner route's kind of running over the top and gets into a really good – really good spot on the field. So you have flood. Um, the other thing that you can do with flood and the other purpose of flood is that flood is probably the best one play score formula in this formation. So one of my favorite things to do is if I know they're running a lot of cover two, I will flip flood real quick. And then we're just going to streak the slot receiver and we're going to stem the tight end corner all the way down. And what you're going to see is this fade on the left side is going to be a consistent touchdown against cover two to the short side of the field. Now, like I said, generally we want to run this formation to the wide side of the field. So if they're running cover four on us, it's the same combo. It's just we're going to run this down to the wide side of the field. So all we're going to do is stem the tight end down all the way now, and we're going to streak this slot receiver, and you're going to see that now the circle receiver is going to get open and get some deep separation over the top of the formation with a big one play score. It's even better against cover three. Um, it's, so you, you basically have within flood the ability to bomb pretty much every coverage in the game, which is, is really, really helpful in a game where switch stick is certainly going to make the intermediate passing game worse. But if you can bomb them over the top or you can hit the quick games, you know, obviously things are going to be much more open. So here you see, see how that outside their bit. Quinn Ewers got a massive inaccurate. I don't know why he got an inaccurate. I think I'm literally getting under pressure inaccurates in practice mode with sending three people, sending two people, sending no people. Um, for some reason, that's just how they coded practice mode. Practice mode is, is, is really difficult sometimes with the sheds, but we'll show this to you again. So you see here, as long as I have time and we get a nice blue pass, that's open. And you could throw that consistently against cover three. So the only coverage they can really realistically run on the right side is cover two, but there's so many ways within the playbook itself to manipulate that cover two coverage. Uh, one of the other, one of my other just simple things that I wanted to show you guys is let's say they're sending a lot of blitz pressure at you. This is where I like to use the RPO. So if I want, if I'm playing nickel double mug and they're blitzing me a lot, I love to go to this RPO. Um, this RPO is either going to be a really, really good run for you if you just let the quarterback hand it off. Or if they're trying to blitz you out of a zone, which is pretty popular, a lot of people, if they're going to blitz you, they're going to blitz you out of a zone, right? They're going to do like a hard flat hook curl type deal. If they do something like a zone blitz on you, this RPO is normally really good against zone blitzes. So you see here, even though they have a flat defender out there, they don't have the numbers to be able to, to defend this. It's how I can basically stretch that right sideline really, really easily. Now, the next play that I want to go over is another variation of dagger, and this is going to kind of be the old Durham setup. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your running back on a streak. You're going to put your outside receiver on a wheel. You're going to put your uh, your tight end on what I like to do this year is put him on an in route and stem him all the way down. You could easily just put him on a drag route if you want. And I actually would prefer to run a crossing route as opposed to the post. I don't really like the posts in this game. I, I, in terms of, like I said, man beating principles and zone beating, I really like the crossers better. So my first read here is this circle receiver. And I want to say something real quick about this circle receiver. You want to force them to have to defend that route. And the best way that they're going to be able to defend that route is to put a cover two zone over there. So what you can do with this wheel route is you can stem him up one and you'll see it'll make it run a little bit more over the middle. And then what you're going to see is against this cover two coverage, you can actually throw this over the top of that deep half. And this has really due to the wide hash marks that college football 25 is built on. So if they're going to run a lot of cover two on you on that right hand side, this is a great way to manipulate that coverage. So 
We're going to go with that wheel route. We're going to stem him a couple, basically just get him out to the numbers essentially is all you're trying to do here. And then you're running this backside combo. So again, you see, oh, it's cover two. If I, I know that if I wait on this and just get a little bit of time, I'm going to be able to clear this cover two. And broken tackles are so easy in this game. This could very easily be a one play score. So that's a big route in this in this offense, in my opinion. And then the other thing about cover two, the harder thing about cover two really is the right side when they're backed off. So you'll see that this cover two will do a good job, as you see, kind of playing him, and it's kind of hard to fit that window in. But what happens in this year's game is when people run cover two on you, they are – if they're leaving like a cloud flat or even a soft squat – and let's say they're running against this, they're begging you to throw this tight end. Watch that cloud. There's so much space now underneath for us to just be able to throw the tight end over and over and over again. So if you ever get in a situation where your opponent says, I want to take the tight end away, and they decide that they're going to they're going to hard flat their cover two, then as you look at this fade, you'll see that I can actually freeform this to the left and kind of sneak that in a really tight window but honestly a really good window for your offense. The other thing that's obviously open as well with this is your crossing route. So if you are, you know, maybe you don't see this, the, the fade come open, you're looking right first and you see, okay, that's covered. Well, look, this is wide open. And, and this is a probably one of the better ways to use this play. Another thing that you're able to do with this play is again, you're basically creating a high low strain on that left side. So we're creating a high low strain on the left side. We're also creating kind of a, um, a middle of the field strain here. And so a lot of times if they play the running back, you're throwing the crosser. If they go to the crosser, you're going to throw the running back. It's pretty much very simply how this is going to work. Now, the last play that I want to go over is kind of a situational play call that I like to use. This is going to help with zone blitzes. This is red zone PA corner. We're going to block the running back. This is going to help pick up the majority of blitzes that you're going to face in this game. And then what we're going to do here is we are going to um, put our tight end on a corner route, stem him all the way down. So that's a super sharp cutting corner route. And then what I like to do with this slot receiver, a little bit up to you, but I think it's super simple. Just put him on a little crossing route underneath. And what this is going to do with this slant route or crossing route is if they play cover two on you, I want you to look for, I think I was actually in cover three there. Um, I don't know if I was in cover three. That was actually, the, the zones played really odd. Let me make sure that I'm in cover two, but if they are ever running a lot of cover two, this is a great combo because the tight end corner will pull the deep half. And then really what you're looking for is this post. Yeah, that post is actually, or that deep half's playing out of his mind. So we need to do something to manipulate the deep half. So I'll show you what you can do. Uh, I don't know why that deep half's playing so good, but if you want to split a cover two coverage, uh, all you need to do here is we're going to slant the tight end and run the play like this now. And typically this slant will be enough to pull the deep half. Just a tick. Yep. And there's the, there's the crazy sheds, man, that I'm telling you about in practice mode. They just, they just sometimes they just go crazy. All right, I'll show this to you again. And what you can do on the left side is just stem the post up a little bit more. By stemming him up just a little bit more, it just puts that deep half in a little bit more strain and makes it harder for him to play him when he cuts. So you see how we're able to just basically split the cover two with that solo receiver on that route combo. And then the other thing that you're able to do because you're running that, that sharp cutting corner and that sharp cutting corner, it can come from the tight end if you wanted it to. So you can really put either one of those receivers on the corner route and stem them all the way down. But what's really cool about this is the stemmed corner is going to pull all those flat zones. And then you're going to be able to throw the C route kind of in this. I think I was in coverage. I don't know if I had vert yellow or what, what I had there, but, but you can kind of throw, you can kind of throw the tight end into a, or, um, not the tight end. You can kind of throw the, the C route into a unique pocket. This is obviously my least called play. I don't call this a ton. Um, I don't think you need to call this a ton unless you're obviously facing, um, you know, heavy pressure. But you'll see. See how this kind of gets into a soft spot? Pretty decent little route that you have at your disposal. And then you also have this post on the backside to just kind of keep them honest, keep them honest. Um, you also have some other stuff in this playbook. Like you could go to this trip stuff if you wanted to, uh, you could, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good offense in this game, 
But this one is probably the most consistent. I think this one's the only one you really need to be successful. If I have to beat man coverage, I did want to show you this one other play. If I absolutely have to beat man coverage and what I've been doing isn't been working, I'm going to go to corner strike. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my tight end on a crossing route. I'm going to put my solo wide receiver on an in route, and I'm going to stem it underneath significantly. I'm going to block my running back here. And then on this outside guy, I'm going to put him on a post, but I'm going to put a fairly deep post like this. And essentially, this is kind of my all out. Like, I have to be able to beat man coverage. This would be what I go to. The main route you're looking for is that route to the circle receiver. It's the best route on the play. It's the reason you would call the play. But obviously, the reason we're also putting these hot routes around it. And again, I would put this post like really deep. I mean, really almost like almost too deep to a degree. But basically something like this, and then you'll see that this short cross to the tight end cooks man coverage, or deep cross to the tight end cooks man coverage. That's what I would do. Uh, as far as red zone with this scheme, there's really only – there's a couple things you can do that I did want to highlight. So if I do get down here in the red zone, and let's say that I want to try to pass, the easiest thing to do as far as passing in the red zone, in my opinion, is to use corner strike. And what you're going to do is you're going to, uh, you're going to smart route the corner – and then you're going to wheel the running back, and then you're going to, you know, basically cross her the tight end, put a little, uh, put a, um, I'd probably like block the tight end actually now that I think about it. We're going to put this solar receiver on a curl, and we're going to stem him all the way down. That is super important. And then we're just going to short cross this guy. This is my favorite red zone play in this. Basically, my first read is I'm going to look to the right, see if I can hit this corner route. A lot of times you can. A lot of times you can, as you see right there, I can throw that against a lot of coverages. So I'm just going to look over there, see if that's available. If it's not available, let's say they're running some type of cover two, or you just feel like, all right, I just didn't feel like that was open. Then what I like to do with the rest, this is where I like to kind of turn my attention now to this short cross. This short cross a lot is, is pretty good. The tight end route, um, if you wanted to, you could put the tight end on a lot of different things. But honestly, I just feel like he kind of gets in the way of stuff. The best route to put him on would be a trail route if you wanted to put him on something but because he'll hold the user in the middle of the field. But basically, if you look here, look at the pressure that I'm getting. These guys don't have quick jump. They don't have anything, and they're just, they're just out here. They're just out here shedding my life away on a send three in practice mode. Classic college football 25. All right, so corner strike. We're going to smart route the corner. We're going to curl the solo, stem him all the way down, short cross, and then running back wheel. And then what you could do with the tight end, like I said, is if you want to put him on a trail route, you can. That's mainly just to hold the user in the middle of the field. But essentially what will happen is this short cross will get open in that back corner just like that. Now, that's the hardest way to score in the red zone, but it is probably the best passing play that you have. Also, I really want to showcase, and I'm just going to go against random plays here. I just want to showcase this RPO alert duo, RP, uh, the RPO version of this. This run is really good. Like, of course, I say that, and somehow, I don't know what just happened to me. I've never seen that before. If they do this, we're going to the screen. <laughs> like, if they, if they give us this look right here, we'll just go to this play. A lot of times, you're going to get in, run the ball. The run is really good in this game is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then again, like I said, I, I think this duo is really good. We're not getting great blocking, but it's, it's open. And then I'll show you the actual regular duo play. And I'll also show you how you can throw this RPO. So... This RPO is open a lot of times. Like, you can just throw this and catch it. And I've thrown so many touchdowns of just doing that simple thing right there. But two other runs that I wanted to cover real quick in this formation, and then we'll talk a little bit about – we'll talk a little bit about um, what's the uh, the Wildcat. So so you see here, I mean, this, this run is really good. If you actually run the regular duo, you get a faster handoff animation, and you can cut different directions. So the cool part is you can hand it off here – but now we're just going to cut it over here and turn it into almost like a base run as opposed to a duo run. So this duo run's extremely versatile. It's uh, pretty good blocking. And with the spins and jukes, normally you're going to be able to get in with just this run. So just kind of keep that in mind. A couple different runs that you have within the playbook are all pretty good. The pin and pull toss is a pretty good run as well. So for the pin and pull toss, you're just going to try to get this block right here. And you see, I mean, this is a very good run. If you you know, it just kind of depends on what front they're giving you. That's how running is. But would love for you to, you know, try this out in the red zone or just in situations where you think you got a good look to run. A lot of defenses struggle to stop this. 
And because I can spin inside so easy, I can really kind of use this almost like a stretch to the right. So you see here, spin inside. That's what I'm kind of trying to show you. So that's pretty much the passing plays uh, that I would use and kind of how I would use Bunch Strong. And now I want to show you how I would use the Wildcat. Again, the other thing that you do have in this playbook, because you can set audibles, this trips, this trips offset weak formation, you can run things like RPO read screen, RPO bubble. These are all good plays. These were good plays last year. These are good plays this year. So I'd probably set like RPO read bubble. I'd probably set um, RPO read screen, right? And the way that this could work is let's say you come out. Okay, we're getting a red zone situation. I'm going to go to the RPO screen or I'm going to go to the RPO bubble. And this is a pretty good play, uh, pretty good way to run the ball. So, you know, we just look out here. Okay, that's not really open. We're just going to hand it off. See what I'm saying? So these are, these are, little things within the playbook that are going to make offense a lot easier for you. And then obviously the ultimate like little thing in the playbook that makes offense a lot, lot easier for you is the fact that if you go down to the wildcat formation here, this unbalanced, the two plays that I like to utilize are the jet sweep and the power with Texas. You have kind of the, the standard setup that you need. And I would just really personally really push you to, to try the power play i think the power play is the most versatile if you're patient with this you can normally just cut it outside and it's going to be super hard for them to guard so you have that within this playbook as well um you know you can run mix it if they're consistently taking away your power play maybe you run a jet sweep maybe you run a counter if they're really loading the box up over there but honestly look at this with the power i can also run straight i don't have to just run to the right but I could, like, let's say I see, oh, there's really, it's a really wide defensive front. Well, now I can just run straight down the middle and put myself in a position to get seven. Uh, the other thing that I would say in terms of red zone offense for this playbook that I do think is really worth mentioning here is if you don't want to do any of that stuff that I just talked about, you don't really want to be in shotgun, you don't want to be as risky in the Wildcat, you know, you just, you know, whatever. What I would tell you that you can do within this offense is I form tight and you have the play, um, where's it at? Power O. Power O from tight. This play is really good this year. Um, as you see, it's hard to stop power O's in this game. Uh, it really is. It, it's super hard to stop it. You basically have to shoot the power O and not a lot of people know how to shoot power O's. So what I would do is I'd motion this guy. Little hip, hidden tip for you. You can motion him back and forward. See, I can kind of freeze him. So I can kind of like glitch the defense here by this motion here. And then we get an extra blocker. And this is how you score in the red zone, guys. So these are all good plays. They have the I-form tight. They have the wildcat. They have the bunch strong. Like this is the most high-level playbook in the game. And I wanted to drop this, guys, for you to give you kind of a little preview of what we do in our schemes. If you want to get my entire Oregon offensive ebook completely up to date with good, better, even better bombs and uh, really good p uh, pass protection tutorials on how to block all the blitzes, everything you need. You get access to everything by being a school member, school.com slash Cody Ballard. The link to sign up for that is going to be in the description below. Hope to see you over at the school site.